Today's video is sponsored by Into The AM. Into The AM is a men's clothing label with a huge variety of eccentric designs and products such as graphic tees, basic tees, jackets, hoodies, underwear, lounge shorts, and much more. I even have a couple items myself. They are shrink resistant, which is a breath of fresh air for someone as tall as I am, and they are extremely soft and cozy, another must for me because, you know, I like wearing clothes that actually feel good. And you can get 10% off if you use my discount code in the description box below. Be sure to check out my partners at Movie Scene Canada, and if you want to support the channel, please be sure to check out my Patreon page to take part in monthly hangout watch-alongs, watch content early, and be entered to win copies of movies every single month. Now, onto the video. Hey guys, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic, and I had the privilege of seeing The Man from Toronto a little bit early, and I'm here to give you my honest, no BS, non-spoiler review right now and tell you if it's worth a watch. So, we have The Man from Toronto from director Patrick Hughes, and you know him from such films as The Expendables 3, The Hitman's Bodyguard, and The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. And yes, The Man from Toronto does kind of fit into that realm of action comedy type of movies. And our two leads, of course, are Kevin Hart and Woody Harrelson. And the story is about a man named Teddy, played by Kevin Hart, and he's a salesman at a fitness gym, and he's known for screwing everything up, so much so that they even have a word for it teddying it up but he's trying to redeem himself it's his wife's birthday weekend he's trying to book a cabin for them but he gets mistaken for a hitman aka the man from toronto but woody harrelson is the actual man from toronto so they meet up and they actually end up going on the job together but is this movie worth a watch gotta be honest guys no it isn't and the beginning of this movie was just flat out awful and i'm like oh my god i gotta endure two hours of this stuff and i will admit though that the third act it did start to win me over a little bit, but I value your guys' time, and for an overall recommendation, I can't give it. Now I gotta get this out of the way first. I was excited to see this movie because I'm Canadian, and we finally have a big budget, mainstream comedy film, action comedy film with A-list stars about a city from Canada. Yes, we've had Turning Red this year, but The Man from Toronto, it's right there in the title. However, this film does something very, very wrong, and any Canadian will tell you this. The guy says, I'm the man from Toronto, if you hear someone say that, you can tell that they're not from Canada because Canadians drop the extra T at the end of Toronto. So they say, I'm the man from Toronto, not Toronto. You'll never hear someone say, hey, did you see the Toronto Raptors game or the Toronto Maple Leafs game or the Toronto Blue Jays? They're not from Toronto. So as a Canadian, that really bothered me. But for an overall recommendation standpoint, this is an action comedy that isn't very action packed and not very funny. So... <laughs> You're not really coming from a really good standpoint there. Now let's talk about Kevin Hart, because he is in fact our main character. He plays Kevin Hart. And I'm sorry, but I'm finding his act very tiresome nowadays. You know, of course, we're gonna have jokes about his height. His whole character centers around the fact that he is a moron. He's a doofus. He keeps screwing up. I wonder if by the end of the movie, he will end up saving the day and he's not a screw up anymore. Like, it's just so tiresome. There's no real place for this character to grow we've seen it a million times it's very flat and uninteresting and Kevin Hart yes he has some very funny stand-up but in this movie he is just not funny because he has many moments where he's just talking and talking and talking and talking and really trying to force the humor and I feel like some stand-up comedians don't really understand that when it comes to film how there is a difference between stand-up comedy and just comedic acting in film. And there is one funny moment in the movie that actually had me chuckling out loud, but it's just a well set up scene. And I feel like it could have worked better as an SNL sketch, like a little skit or that you would see on YouTube or something like that, because it's just a little tiny scene. It works well. It's the only time I really laughed in the movie. And then you have Woody Harrelson. He plays the badass hitman. And I think Woody Harrelson does a great job in almost any movie that he's in, but the real problem is, is that you have these two characters together and they have absolutely zero chemistry together. You'd think it'd be a pretty good juxtaposition, right? White, black, short, tall, moron, badass, but they have no chemistry whatsoever in this movie. And like I said earlier with Kevin Hart just talking and talking and talking and really trying to force the comedy, a lot of their interactions, I'm like, okay, I get it. They're different people. They're not gonna see eye to eye on this situation. That's not a height joke. It's just not funny and yes comedy is subjective but hey every single movie review is subjective people who tell you otherwise are lying but what about the story right a man who's a doofus gets mistaken for a hitman so you have a fish out of water scenario that's generally comedy gold 
and I feel like this premise could have worked. It's very similar to Dumb and Dumber, where it's like, man, this guy can't be that amateur. Like, he's got to be a pro. But they kind of drop that angle. And again, with leads with no chemistry and a comedic premise with no comedy in it, the story really falls flat. And yes, we've seen comedy premises like this before. But, you know, you can do it well. Not done well in this movie. And there's a message in this movie as well. It's just pulled right out of their ass. It's like, you know what? You're not a closer. I need someone with guts. And you do not have guts, Teddy. I need someone with guts on my team. You always just talk. You don't actually do. Gee, I wonder what's going to happen at the end of the movie. I wonder if he's just going to stop talking and actually start doing what he wants to do. I mean, I'm not going to spoil the movie for you, but... I mean, if you've seen any movie before, I think you can tell where this is gonna go. So, okay, the characters in this movie are not really interesting, the story is very basic, it's not very funny, and the message is very ham-fisted. Well, it's an action movie, right? Can I just sit back and eat some popcorn and watch some cool action sequences? Well, there is one cool action sequence near the end of the movie, and the rest of it is just very bland, and the CGI in this movie is not very good, and I mean, I can... I can forgive that, right? You know, sometimes the budget for these movies is not as high as an Avengers or a Matrix or Spider-Man or whatever the case may be, like a big budget sci-fi action blockbuster, right? So you can have smaller action set pieces, but it, it is distracting. The CGI was very, very, it was a very big eyesore, let's say that. And the saturation of the picture looked just so cheap. And I feel like a lot of these movies, and I know that this movie was going to come out in theaters, and I believe Sony sold it to Netflix, and I think that was a very smart move on Sony's part. But a lot of these movies, they have the saturation just really boosted up, like Ghostbusters 2016. And I think that's to kind of try to trick the audience into going like, ooh, bright colors, this looks really good. It looks like crap. And while yes, like I said, at the end of the movie, I did start to get won over by the movie. Everything started to come together in terms of the plot points, you know, the action scenes got a little bit better, the comedy scenes, you know, I kind of got where they were going with this, but it's a really rocky road to get there, and for an overall rating, I gotta give it a 1 out of 5. This movie's just not for me. I've seen really crappy comedies before, I've seen really crappy action movies before, I've even seen crappy action comedies before. I mean, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard I've seen last year, that one was okay, I would still prefer to watch that over this. Just because I feel like the action scenes actually had some excitement to them. The comedy scenes did make me laugh sometimes. And the characters did have some chemistry on screen. That's not really prevalent here. So unfortunately, I can't give a recommendation to The Man from Toronto. And I really wanted to because I'm like, you know what? As a Canadian, um, The Man from Toronto. I mean, I want to see some Canadian love in Hollywood. But we don't get some here. So those are my thoughts on The Man from Toronto. What are yours? Leave them down in the comment section down below. I read every single comment and I appreciate all the support from you guys. If you're new to the channel and you want to see more videos just like this, then hit like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.